So the first thing I'm going to do is create a core pattern so that I can repeat that pattern around. Uh, it might be a bit hard to tell, but I figured a way to create the exact same pattern. It is actually quite easy. Let me show you. I will start off with a rectangle. Then I will make it a double. I will tap C. Now we have that option. I will turn off the close spline option. I will then go into points mode, select the bottom points and delete them. This is going to leave us that straight, you know, spline. But the thing is that we need to add in a little bit curvature to the spline. So to do that, we need to select the points we have, then right click and click on subdivide. Now we have that point in the middle. I will move that up. Actually, before doing that, let me select everything, then come down to the coordinates and zero out the Y position of those points. Okay, now I will move that up. Then I will go into object mode, select the rectangle in the, in the object manager. I will hold on control and drag off the rectangle to duplicate it. I will select the rotate tool, start to rotate, hold on shift and stop at 90 degrees. I will do one more rotation along that way. I will start to rotate, then hold on shift and stop at 90, sorry, 180 degrees. Okay, that was the first step of the pattern. Now we need to duplicate this three times. I will tap E, hold on Ctrl, and move those splines along the X axis. Then I will hold on Shift so that I can stop at exactly 400 centimeters. The reason why I stopped at 400 centimeters is because if you add in a rectangle, you can see that the length of that spline is exactly 400 centimeters this is this is basically why but we need to rotate those duplicated splines one more time so that we have a seamless pattern that goes up and then goes below the spline above so i will hit r rotate in that direction hold on hold on shift and stop at 90 degrees so this is what i am talking about this one is above that one and that one is below that one, which is going to create that pattern we need. I need to do that two more times. I will select those ones, hold on control, hold on shift, stop at 400, then rotate them in that direction. Hold on shift, stop at 90 degrees. I will go back to the move tool, hold on control, hold on shift, stop at 400, and let's make the Final rotation, hold on shift, and here we go. Now we have the pattern we need. We just need some geometry. So to, to create geometry, we need to add in a sweep object. We also need another thing, another spline as a profile, which is going to be a circle. I will drop this one under the sweep, then I will select a random spline and drop it below the circle. Perfect. I will enable the wireframe mode. As you can see, it is too large, so I will select the circle. Remember, this is the profile, so it is what defines the thickness of the spline. I will scale it down, then I will go to the sweep and turn off caps. We don't need them. Other than that, I need to lower down the resolution because if you look at the shape you want to model, you can see that we have like hundreds of of that spline. So we need to lower the density. I will select the rectangle, set the interpolation to uniform and lower that down to something like 1. Now I will move up to the circle. I will basically do the same thing. I will select the uniform and lower down the points to say 0. Actually I will go back to the rectangle and set this one to 0 as well. As I mentioned, we are going to have dozens of of that shape so it is good to lower that down also uh, in the end we are going to subdivide those shapes and when you do that you will have a really nice you know shape circular shape let's turn off the end caps i will also delete that subdivision surface now we need to repeat that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. So why don't we duplicate that sweep seven times? I know I should have done that 
with the first spline that I added in, but it's not too late. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We jump that one. Now what I'm going to do is just replace those splines. Now let me show you a really nice tip. Let's say that you want to change the thickness of, of the splines. So you need to select the circle and scale it up or down. But the thing is that you need to do that seven times. But if you come over here and click on this search icon, you can type in circle, which is going to list every circle that you have in the object manager, which means that you can select them all. Go to the radius and change the, the thickness of the sweeps. Okay, we can always come back and change change that value. Now let me turn up the search and start to repeat that around like uh, I don't know 100 times. Firstly, why don't we add in a null and drop these objects into that null? Then let's select the null and put it into a cloner object. It is set to grids, which is perfect, which is exactly what we need. We just need to adjust the offset. And since we know exact length of the first spline, I will set this to 800. Then I will do the same thing to the Z. 800. And here we go. Now we can increase up the count to say 15 we may need to increase up the count yeah something like that other than that we need to rotate the pattern like 45 degrees so let me do that i will go to the top view sorry to the front view and it seems like we need to rotate it like so, like 90 degrees, so that it faces us in the front view. Somehow, I cannot do that. Let me try it one more time. Okay. Now I will rotate the cloner 4 to 5 degrees. So I will hold on shift and stop at 4 to 5 degrees. Perfect. Now let's see what the what the shape looks like with the subdivision surface on. I will select the cloner and drop it into a subdivision surface. Now we have more idea what the what the shape looks like. We can play around with the thickness, like we can type in circle, select them all and adjust the radius. Let's type in 60 or 70. Let's do it 80. Okay. I will turn off the search bar. Now I will start to bend the corners. It is going to be quite easy. I will just need a bent deformer. I will hide the subdivision surface for now because I need to figure out how the bent deformer works. I mean, in what direction it bends. In Cinema 4, the bent deformer is a bit tricky. So before using it or applying to any object, we need to figure out how it works or, as I said, where it bends. I will hold on shift, stop at 90 and do it one more time. Yes, I want to go in that direction. So let's zero that out. I will right click on that arrow. Then I will unhide the subdivision surface. I will go to the right view and move that bent deformer up. So let's say that the shape is going to start to bend from that point. Now I will drop the bent deformer under the subdivision surface. Then let's try it out. I will bend the mesh by setting this to 90 degrees. Now we need to adjust the bend deformer a bit because it is adding too much distortion. I want to maintain the original aspects of the shape. So what we can do is we can go to the right view and hit T and scale down the bent deformer. As you can see, it is removing some of the excessive distortion. 
Control Z, Control Y. You know what? I think we should enable the subdivision surface. Well, it is not working because we need to group those. I will hit Alt and G. Yeah, now it looks a bit better. But the problem is that those edges are looking too sharp. And I know the reason. Let me turn this off. So we have still a cloner object, which means that those individual objects are not connected. So what we need is a connect object. So I will select the cloner, Alt down Alt, and put the object into a connect object. That should fix that problem. Let's see. I will enable the subdivision surface and then enable the band deformer. And let's check out here. Yeah, it is looking just perfect. If you are getting those sharp looking edges, you should firstly check the connect object and set this to average. Perfect. I will click off and look around. It seems like we need to scale the bent deformer a bit or we can move it down. That looks a bit better, but you can adjust this to your liking. You can scale it down or move it around. But that is looking perfect to me. Now for the other corners, I will duplicate the bent deformer. Then I will rotate it in that direction by holding shift so that I can stop at 90 degrees. Uh, I will turn off the subdivision surface because it is slowing us down. Then I will duplicate it one more time by holding control. Then I will rotate it again 90 degrees. Sorry, 180 degrees. And lastly, I will select the first bat deformer. Hold time control, move it down and rotate it again. Yeah, something like that. Now we need to move on and make this object editable so that we can start to clean this up because we need to, uh, you know, slice this off. We don't need that remaining part. We can duplicate the first object just in case and select the null under the subdivision surface, right click and click on connect objects and delete. Now we have a real mesh, which means that we can start to clean this up. By the way, let me clean out those tags and I will call these grids. Now let's go to the front view. I will select the rectangle selection, select all those points and simply delete them. Hmm, I'm not sure. Maybe we should deselect these as well just to make sure that yeah that that looks a bit better not better but you know a bit safer now what we can do is start to clean up those overlapping parts we can double click simply and delete those ones As you can see, some parts are too damaged to, to select or they are connected to a, a healthy grid that we need. In this case, we can go into edge mode and we can make a loop selection and select, for example, that loop. Then we can make a fill selection, then delete all those ones. By the way, I should say that this is not uh, a very clean process. I mean, we are going to have those weird looking polygons like this one. What we can do is we can start to or try to rotate them. So basically, you need to make some corrections and adjustments, like that area is looking a bit weird. So let me make a loop selection. Yeah, it is absolutely looking weird. So why don't we enable the subdivision surface? I think we should select the remaining parts with the field selection. I think I should just delete those ones. I suppose it should go in that direction. So I will open control.
Yeah. Something like that. As long as it is not visible. I think it is okay. Okay, that looks good enough to me. You can, you can play around with the other parts. Now I want to add in a cube. Scale it up. I will select every edge and bevel them out with say two subdivision. After the record, I modeled that part so that we can make sure that no artifacts are visible. And I could say that it is looking pretty fine to me. I see no problem at all. I mean, the more time you spend on the correction, it is going to look better, obviously. So take your time, clean up the mesh, the corners as much as you can, and we are going to be all right. By the way, we can still adjust the grid size. So let me talk about that before finishing this tutorial. So what you need to do is select everything in polygon mode, right click and click on normal move tool. Then you just need to move the mouse to the right or to the left. So this is going to be it for this tutorial. If you have any questions, just let me know anytime and I will see you the next time. Bye.